everybody, this is Jordan Machado, aspiring biologist and hopefully a future herptologist. And today we're going to be talking about line bred traits, also called polygenic traits. So the fancy way of explaining that is polygenic stands for multiple things affecting that one thing that you're going for. And a simpler way of saying that is just saying line bread. And a way to explain that is kind of like you just take two colors and every generation you are keeping those colors together and you're putting the best of the best makes, in this case, hog noses. So with line bread traits, more often than not, we're actually going for color, but that doesn't mean that you can't go for other things. We're gonna be covering the very popular and well-known extreme red, the lemon ghost, and a few more uncommon ones, like the phoenix red, the blonde, and the green line. Of course, there are many, many other polygenic traits, but I can only cover so many of them. So let's check them out. The extreme red was actually originally developed by Justin Mitchum, and it is a, as I mentioned earlier, polygenic trait. Now, generally what that's gonna look like is just gonna be brighter reds and brighter brown colors in their saddles. And it's just kind of gonna be mixed in there. Now, there were a few other lines of reds used to kind of really accentuate it. They do tend to have this nice kind of fiery looking color to their belly and they get nicer with age. And then there is the Phoenix Red. Now, personally, I was very, very excited to work with the Phoenix Red because this is a line of reds that was originated and worked on all the way in the United Kingdom. So what happens here is they're born looking, you know, a little redder than normal, but every single time they shed, they get nicer and nicer and nicer. Now, take note that getting nicer after each shed is a trait very commonly seen in polygenic traits. So the Phoenix Red is known for actually having very deep red colors. They're not bright saturated oranges or, or even browns. They are legitimately red. Some of them will have really nice contrast between the background and the saddles, whereas others, it's just a complete blast of color everywhere. So we also have the very popular and for a good reason, Lemon Ghost. Now the Lemon Ghost is a yellow line and it was developed by um, Jeff Galewood Jr and he worked for over 20 years to get this line to really be consistent and established. Why did it take so long? Because oftentimes with line breeding, if you take a shortcut and you don't remember to outcross that to unrelated snakes, you have a higher chance of developing abnormalities and bad things. So the Lemon Ghost is just absolutely stunning. They are born a lot more yellow. They've got really nice, just highlighter yellow colors to their background. And like the other ones that I mentioned earlier, they just get prettier every single time they shed. So Best Boy is produced by the one and only Jeff Galewood from JMG Reptiles. And he is a phenomenal expression of what lemon ghosts generally look like when they are considered really high expression. That's something to also remember is that with line breeding, you're gonna be working on a spectrum. You have some lower expression ones and you'll have some higher expression ones. But that also means there is no end to how amazing these guys can look. Basically, every single generation only gets better and better, which makes them phenomenal morphs. So the green line is actually really interesting because that one is still found in the wild. So the green line originally did come from some wild caught specimens that were eventually established into captivity. And honestly, the green line is essentially a nice variation of natural color that is already found in hog noses. Now, why is it called a green line? That's because we did exactly what the other lines have also done with the reds. They've taken the nicest, greenest, earthiest undertones and kind of kept putting them together. Now, what's really cool, especially you get to really notice this with the uh, green line is the effect that having these lines in morphs. So a green line albino will look extremely different from a normal albino or even an extreme red albino. And that just makes it so much more fun to create these awesome combos. So the blonde line is also a line bred trait, at least from what I've been able to notice. And it's not as commonly worked with as the other lines that I mentioned before, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't have a really cool effect on the hog noses. What I've noticed from the blonde lines is that they kind of have more of a darker, like muddy yellow earthy tone to them. So simultaneously, they're a lot lighter than normals, but 
that like yellow mustard undertone is really, really strong. And what I really wanna see is the effect that the blonde lines will have in other morphs. So that will probably lead to more like yellow looking albinos and possibly even softer looking um, snows. Like what would a blonde exanthic look like? Because exanthic removes yellow. So what happens if you put it with a snake that has really high yellow and very low melanin? Will we get like a really soft white silver snake? Or are we gonna get like really high contrast between the dark colors and the background, which is usually filled with yellow in the blondes. But yeah, honestly, there are so many really cool polygenic traits out there. I was only able to cover a few of them. I definitely wanna have a lot of other amazing polygenic traits and I plan on making some of my own too. And the thing is there are so many other ones there. And the coolest thing about lions is that you get to just honor all of these different lineages and kind of make them work into whatever you can imagine, honestly. Because again, even though we mostly focus on colors, there are other things that we totally could be line breeding for. And you might've noticed that some hog noses have really different eye shapes. Some of them have this really angry looking, like really well-defined brow, whereas others have these really soft, round, just adorable little chubby anime eyes. And I do not mean bug eyes. I mean legitimate, just less of a brow definition that lets you see the whole little eyeball. It's looking all cute at you. We can also possibly affect scale structure, scale consistency. I mean, quite frankly, there are so many different things that you can pick that the possibilities are endless. So keep it snakeful, everybody.